There's a saying that dogs are not small. There's a saying that cats are not small dogs. I guess dogs are not small cats either, but totally true when it comes to breast cancer in dogs and cats. While there are some similarities, like 50% will have multiple masses, and you know a lot of the testing is gonna be similar, there's definitely a lot of differences. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Sue Cantervet. Welcome back to the vlog. Since it is October and it is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I am continuing my series on breast cancer in dogs and cats. This video is gonna be all about kitty cats. If you are interested in dogs, be sure to check out the last video. We'll put a link below. In the beginning of that one, I mentioned a bunch of other useful videos and be sure to check them out as well. Specifically, vlog number 73, where I talk about finding cancer earlier, especially those superficial lumps and bumps in our dogs and cats. And I talk about how important it is to be doing a monthly lump and bump exam. And this is the perfect time to be talking about that because early detection is so important for breast cancer or mammary cancer in cats. If you watch the one in dogs, this is a cancer in cats that is so different than dogs. There are some similarities, but in dogs, 50% are benign and 50% are malignant. And unfortunately, mammary cancer in cats is much more similar to women. So it is much more malignant and much more aggressive. So early detection is gonna be so important for a good outcome for our kitty cats. So let's dive in, let's break down, let's talk about feline mammary cancer. So what is feline mammary cancer and how common is it? It's quite common actually. It's estimated to be the third most common cancer that we see in kitty cats after lymphoma and skin cancer. As I mentioned in the introduction, the chance of malignancy is much higher and much different than dogs. So in dogs, only 50% are malignant and still half of those malignant ones are cured with surgery. So we don't need to use chemotherapy for dogs as often as we do for cats. So in cats, about 80 to 90% of cats with mammary cancer are malignant. So again, like I mentioned, much more similar to women. One thing that is similar to dogs and cats is 50% will have multiple masses. So if you or your veterinarian find one lump in your cat's mammary chain, and just as in dogs, there there's multiple chains essentially going from the armpit area to the inner thigh area. Cats tend to have eight, so four on each side, while dogs have 10, five on each side. But again, both dogs and cats, 50% will have multiple masses. So if you or your veterinarian, let's try that again. If you or your veterinarian find one mass, you definitely wanna be feeling, or as we say, palpating for a second mass. The other thing that is different with dogs. In dogs, we usually just do what we call a lumpectomy. We just wanna remove all of the affected tissue. For in cats, and, and guys, I have to say, after being in practice all these years, this is one of the mistakes that I continue to see. Your cat's first surgery should be a radical mastectomy. So again, we wanna take off that whole chain, uh, all four mammary glands, if there are two tumors on the affected side, the surgeon may kind of have to loop around or figure that out. But in general, the first surgery should not just be removing that one affected mammary mass. It should be a radical mastectomy. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into the surgery. And then the other thing that I want to touch in the overview is that these are highly metastatic. So 80, about 80% 80 of these will metastasize. So most kitty cats, you know, the majority of kitty cats, we are going to be recommending chemotherapy. If you watched any of my other videos, and I would encourage you to go back and check out the chemotherapy playlist, cats tolerate chemo better than dogs. So that's super great, because I know how scary it is. I really, really do. I forget sometimes the fear that people have because I'm so comfortable and I love my job so much, but I know, like when I say chemotherapy, like the hair in the back of your neck goes up and you're like, lady, you're crazy, but chemotherapy is so well tolerated in dogs and cats as a whole, and cats tolerate chemotherapy better than dogs. And a lot of the chemotherapy protocols that 
we use for cats with mammary tumors are coming in like every three weeks. So less frequently than something like lymphoma. So talk to your, you know, I would really encourage you to see a cancer specialist. We usually uh, remember to put that link in on where to find a specialist. So this would be a great time to, you know, meet a cancer specialist and talk to them about the different chemotherapy options. So that's a pretty good overview, but let's dive in. Let's start breaking down these cancers in cats. So another similarity with dogs and cats is that early spay is protective. So really we want to spay kitties before their first heat. Uh, a little less confusing if you watch the section in dogs where we talk about in dogs there's some uh, newer evidence that talks about delaying spay for protective benefits for other cancers. We haven't yet seen that in cats so pretty much uh, it's been shown that you want there's um, a significant reduction in the likelihood of breast cancer or mammary cancer in cats if you spay them before the six months, a 91% reduction. If you spay them before the first year, it's still an 86% reduction. But then if you do it before the second year of age, only an 11% reduction. So really would encourage you to ideally to do it before six months of age, but definitely before one year of age is definitely the recommendation. And like I said, a little less confusing than dogs, which makes this section much nicer. Uh, again, a couple other differences. We talked about cats tend to have eight glands instead of 10, and the similarities with women, this tends to be a much more aggressive cancer in cats than it is in dogs. Uh, but one of the, again, the similarities is early detection is so important. So size is prognostic, and again, you wanna be doing that monthly lump and bump on your kitty, feeling them, so please check out um, video vlog number 60 where I talk about doing that. I do it in Penelope, my Labrador, but it's still going to be very similar and you can see on where and how to do that exam. And again, I recommend doing a monthly lump and bump exam, not just for mammary cancer, but from nose to tail for your kitty cat. And that's going to be in 73, vlog number 73, detecting cancer earlier. And we're definitely going to put links to all these important videos below. So just as in dogs, these are typically things that pet owners will find on their own. If you find them, let's find them when they're small. Sometimes your veterinarian will be finding them and sometimes they're just gonna feel like a little BB and it's not always in the gland itself. It could be anywhere along the mammary chain. Um, sometimes they're gonna be thick, sometimes they're gonna be ulcerated, sometimes they're gonna be soft. Um, but remember, 50% will have multiple masses, so make sure you feel for additional masses. What's gonna happen when you bring your pet into the veterinarian? Uh, again, similar to dogs, we are going to measure with our calibers because size has been shown to be predictive for outcome. We will usually aspirate it just to make sure that it is mammary and not fat or some other skin mass that in that region. We are gonna feel the lymph nodes. If they feel big, we will aspirate those to see if they spread, if the cancer is spread to the lymph nodes because that would be a negative predictor. Okay, big difference between dogs and cats coming up. So in dogs, I mentioned that 50% are benign. So I said it's reasonable to go to surgery without doing the staging tests, the chest x-ray and the ultrasound, because if it's benign, you don't really need to look for spread. But in cats, it's different, guys. I said 80 to 90% are malignant, and it has a very high spread rate. So in cats, and you're doing a big surgery, doing that radical mastectomy, absolutely 100% you should be doing three view chest x-rays and an abdominal ultrasound before you go to surgery. Absolutely, that is my recommendation. There are gonna be some kitties that you know could be benign. We talked about maybe about 20% are benign. So maybe those you would do a biopsy of the mass before you do the big surgery so you don't do a big surgery. But again, statistically speaking, most of them are going to be malignant. Any questions, you know what you need to do. You need to bring your kitty in because I cannot make specific recommendations whether you comment below or send me pictures. You need to go see your veterinarian and ideally see a specialist or a surgeon. A lot of the time, you know, the veterinarians that I've worked with, we will work together with a boarded surgeon on these because of the size of the surgery. And we'll talk about sometimes we're going to do both sides of the mammary chain as well. So 
I'm going to repeat it again because it, you know, it's so important. If you haven't heard about my early detection lumps and bumps program, see something, do something, why wait, aspirate. I talk about this in vlog number 73. If the mass is the size of a pea, which is a centimeter, an M&M &M or a Skittle and been there a month, I can't look at the mass. You can't look at the mass and know what it is. Please go to your veterinarian. Again, whether it's in the mammary gland area or anywhere in your dog or your cat, we need to do an aspirate. Don't forget, I have skin maps. I had these, these charts that you can print out and keep track of lumps and bumps on your cat. They're free and they're on my website. We'll put a link below, but again, they're in the pet owner resource section. So again, you the pet owner can really help us find these lumps and bumps early. So there's a staging system that has been shown to be predictive and that is based on the size of the tumor whether or not there's lymph node spread and whether there's distance spread and that's why we need those chest x-rays and the ultrasound and guys this the size is not that big it's two centimeters is the low category the better category and then two to three centimeters is staged um, part of stage two and then stage three is three centimeters so which is not that big i always say it's about the height of my glasses so again really super important that we're finding these lumps and bumps early uh again i just i can't stress how important it is you feel your cat on a monthly basis to find these because some of these can be very quick growing and that it will really change the outcome of these what are some of the other things that have been shown to be prognostic or predictive so we mentioned size gender just as in dogs we do rarely see this cancer in male cats and male cats tend to have a crappy poor prognosis i don't think i've ever seen a male cat but it's definitely reported in the literature another thing that will really make an impact on how long your cat lives after surgery more specifically whether or not the cancer comes back is the surgery and I talked about doing the radical mastectomy so again removing the entire chain and that surgery has been associated with decreasing the likelihood that your cat's tumor will come back so again that has definitely been shown to be the treatment of choice other things are just as in dogs I'm going to look at the biopsy your cancer specialist your veterinarian is going to look at the biopsy there's different types there's complex carcinomas versus some of the other carcinomas so the type of tumor that it is has been shown to be predictive so super important that you make sure to consent to send that sample out to the lab higher grade tumors are more aggressive this is you know across the board like with mast cell tumors and just you know soft tissue sarcomas injection site sarcoma so higher grade tumors tend to have a shorter survival time if it's spread to the lymph nodes the chest the internal organs that has been associated and just as uh, there's this rare subtype called inflammatory mammary carcinoma that we occasionally see in dogs it is also in cats and they tend to do poorly as well so really to you know summarize very important that cats have those chest x-rays and ultrasound before they go to surgery they should have a nice big surgery one of the questions that we don't have the answers and i'm always really honest with that is whether or not to go back and do a bilateral so the other side the jury's still out basically so i discuss the pros and the cons with each uh case you know on a case-by-case -case basis i do recommend it in some cases so that might be something that may be recommended for you and your cat so I just want you to hear about that so usually in most cats will do one surgery let them recover and then usually about a month later go back and do the second side so again the goal of that would be to reduce any likelihood of recurrence and new tumors in the second side and then usually go on to chemotherapy after that all right, so I mentioned in the beginning that chemotherapy is very well tolerated, a little bit different than dogs. So I keep contrasting because cats are definitely different with breast cancer than dogs. So in dogs, only about 25% of dogs with breast cancer will typically get a recommendation for chemotherapy. Cats, most of them do, again, due to the high malignancy and high metastatic or spread rate. We typically, the goal is the same as in dogs and women. It's to prevent the cancer from metastasizing or spreading. We're typically gonna start about 10 to 14 days after the incision is healed. Um, 
not a very consistent chemotherapy protocol. There's not enough studies, I'll be honest, and that's one of the frustrating parts about you know some of the cancers in cats. I definitely feel that we need more more studies, uh, but usually it's going to be a doxorubicin-based protocol, sometimes with non-steroidals as well. That we are always careful when we use non-steroidals in kitty cats, but definitely um, that's going it's going to be usually a doxorubicin-based protocol. And like I said, the good news with kitty cats and chemotherapy is it's extremely well tolerated. They tend to have very little side effects. Uh, they don't lose their hair. Uh, they may lose some whiskers. Their gastrointestinal side effects, so vomiting, diarrhea, um, loss of appetite tends to be very minimal, and their white blood cell count, they just handle it really, really well. So most of the owners that choose to do it are usually quite happy, so definitely talk to your oncologist about it. But again, in general for cats, we're gonna recommend chemo about 10 to 14 days after surgery once that incision is healed. Uh, and usually probably my guess is gonna be about five to six months of chemo uh, is gonna be recommended for your kitty cat. So the prognosis is not as good as dogs, um, but still a very treatable cancer. So when we look at about the one year survival kitty, the one year survival, the one year survival rates, um, about you know 30 to 55% of the cats are alive at one year with surgery, um, and that increases to about 60%. So it doesn't sound like a huge increase, but a lot of that is this is a compilation or a summary of many studies. Uh, two year survival rates about 50 to 20 percent so still pretty good i know you're saying dr sue doesn't seem like enough but you have to remember that the overall lifespan of dogs and cats is much shorter so two years is you know what still probably you know seven ten years to people so it's not an insignificant proportion of their life and studies show about 37 to 40 percent two year survival rates with chemotherapy so chemo does increase that like I said, we definitely need more studies for chemotherapy and mammary cancer, but I typically do recommend it because one, it's so well tolerated in such a highly metastatic disease. So that's it guys, that is the summary, that is the 411 on mammary cancer. Be sure to go back and watch the dog one, like I, I've been trying to highlight for you, but they're a little bit different. So I hope that you found this helpful. Uh, there are gonna be some Q and A's, and if you missed the Q and A's, they'll be in the playlist for you know mammary cancer for both the dog and cats. You can go back and watch those. You know what I appreciate? I appreciate if you subscribe, if you comment, if you share this video with anyone. Please tell me what other videos you'd like to see. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me. I hope you found this helpful. I just want you to have the information to make a knowledgeable decision. Again, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you at the next video.